Hey there, Emma here. And in 2023, I hosted a painting challenge called Dogtober, where we painted a different dog breed every day of the month. You may have seen some of the clips that I posted on shorts at the time, just showing like a few little clips from each painting, but I've decided to go and pull out the real time footage and share them this year so you can follow along if you'd like to. A couple of disclaimers slash explainers. The point of the challenge for me was that I wanted to try and loosen up. I'm a realistic portrait artist and so I gave myself a smaller size to work with as well as a time frame. I'm painting on roughly about A6 size paper, which is pretty small. In terms of measurements, that's like roughly 10 and a half centimeters by 14.8 centimeters or 4.1 by 5.8 inches. And I also tried to set myself a time limit of about 15 minutes. I really wanted to challenge myself to loosen up, but you can approach this any way you like. Maybe you'll do it in a different medium or a certain color palette. The options are endless, totally up to you, but you're more than welcome to follow along. And these are kind of like mini tutorials. I do want to point out though, that as this was unusual for me and a challenge to me, not all of them are that good. <laughs> I really struggled in the beginning to start loosening up and particularly struggled with the long haired dogs, but you know, it's an adventure and you'll see me progress through the month and learn a lot. If you wanna grab the outline sketches, I have put all 31 sketches into a document, a PDF that you can download from my website. I will link that in the description. You'll just need to pop your email address in, which will sign you up to my mailing list, but then you'll get the document with all 31 outline sketches, roughly about the same size that I'm painting. You're more than welcome to print them, trace them, size them up or down if you need to. I'll be working with my usual set of supplies and mixing colors as well, but I will talk you through the process as we go. Let's jump in. Day 28 and we are painting a Shetland Sheepdog or a Sheltie. I'm a bit biased. This is one of my favorite paintings of the month, probably because Shelties are just like mini rough collies and I have one. <laughs> We're gonna get started with mixing up some browns. So we need a kind of a dark brown so we can mix that with yellow and red to make orange and then add some blue to it. And then we can mix off to the side of that a slightly lighter dirty orange color. So I'm kind of mixing my red and yellow to make orange into some of that brown, just to kind of like cheat, make it brown a little bit. Then we are going to pretty much whip through a lot of this painting in the first layer, which is fun. So I'm gonna grab some of the brown on my brush and start with those big, beautiful pointed ears. And we are gonna start sketching them in. My collie has tipped ears, but these ones are still very cute. And so we're gonna do some fluffy strokes around the ears, but remember, we don't wanna to get too caught in the details. We're not trying to paint every stroke of fur. And then we kinda of wanna wrap it around this little mask that's around its face. So we are going to be very careful with, with where we take that. We don't wanna wash it all over the whole dog. I'm gonna pop the other ear in while we're at it. I love its expression as well and it's how, how it's got its little head tilted, it's so cute. So let's wrap it around that mask now that comes in close to the face. And take that down the side a little bit. Flicking strokes of fur out to the edge, but really roughly and you know, they're pretty thick. We're not doing individual strokes of fur, more like clumps of fur. And we're leaving a gap on like the, I wanna say the cheek, but under it, because it's got such a long snout. It's not really the cheek. It's more like the neck. So taking these long chunks of fur down the right side, and then we're gonna do the same on the left. I'm gonna dip into some more color because that's a bit too pale. I'm gonna match it up. So very carefully chucking these big, chunky strokes of fur in. And we've got a lot of white fur on the chest that helps just make the painting go faster because we don't need to do anything with it. But lots of rough fur, both sides, and we have got this framed pretty well. And now we're gonna go into our orange. So we wanna be relatively quick with that layer because what we wanna do here is just give a little kiss to a couple of areas when we pop this orange in. Not the whole thing, we don't wanna to touch the whole border of the brown and the orange, but we wanna do it in a couple spots just because it's gonna give this really cute, fun, like exchange of color, just a little bit of blending. You can see some of the orange going up 
in the head now towards that ear, just very, very lightly. So we're going to put this orange on the face. We're going to obviously cut out the eyes and the nose. And there's also a little bit of a triangular marking coming up from the nose as well. So we want to cut that out and we don't want to take this all the way down around the mouth either. I want to leave just a little bit of a gap at the bottom, a little bit of a skinny triangle on top of the nose and then wrap that around the actual nose and leave a little bit of white on the very tip of the snout and mouth as well. Then continue that over to the other side. And I just love that. I love that little explosion of orange into the brown fur. I just think it's a really cool, uniquely watercolor thing. And so I like making that happen in my portraits where I can. So we have to work quickly because if these edges start drying, they're not gonna do that little exchange. Now flicking this fur back towards the brown, we don't need to connect every little bit and fill in all the white gaps. A little bit of brown, I'm just going to dab a couple of spots on the face just to try and shade it a little bit, but it's just not, it's just not really working. So we'll leave that alone. I've got a little bit of dirty blue gray on my brush and I'm going to sweep that along the bottom of the feet. Now, if you don't have this color on your palette, you can mix that up by basically just adding blue into some of your brown. So keep adding blue into a brown and then you'll get this kind of dirty gray color. I just had this on the palette from previous dog topers. So I've swept that along the bottom of the feet and I'm also doing it a little bit on the chest as well. So just under the head flicking strokes of fur out and around and then kind of just blending that down with some water just to soften it up. So mixing more of that blue gray color into what was left of the brown and adding some Mars black just to make a deeper brown color to pop that on the tips of the ears. You could just add the black to the brown. It'll do the exact same thing and just deepening up those ears a little bit with that color. It's just gonna help recede them back into the painting a little bit and bring the snout and the face forward. We're gonna dry that all off. And there you go, we've done like a huge part of this portrait already, very cool. I've dipped into some brown color and we're gonna do some work on the markings on the face that just wasn't happening before wet on wet. It was just kind of dissipating into the damp paper and color. So I've added a little bit of like a winged eyeliner. Think of it there, just a little, little bit of a marking on the edge of the eye on the outside. A little bit of a teeny tiny eyebrow on both eyes. A little bit above where the cheeks would be. A little bit to kind of carve out the snout here. These are really long snouted animals and having a front on portrait can be tricky. I'm going to sweep a bit of color under the nose, like the little opening of the mouth there and curve that around, connecting everything up. Oh my God, they're so cute. Dipping into some black now, Mars Black, I'm gonna paint the nostrils in. So we're front on, so they should look pretty symmetrical. Obviously the head is tilted, that's the only thing. Popped in the little slit that runs between them. And I'm just going over the opening of the mouth and the kind of corners of the mouth there. Rinsing off, dabbing off. And I'm just gonna lift a tiny little bit of that off. It's a bit intense. Fade out those edges. Dipping into some brown now. I'm just gonna make what's left of the orange into more of a brown. And we are gonna paint the little eyes in. So very, very tiny eyes. Again, you don't have to take the eyes all the way to the edge of the shape that you preserved and negatively painted around. We have been a lot of the times leaving little gaps in our portraits. And that just keeps the loose effect happening and just can act as the white of the eyes as well. Dipping into a bit of the blue gray color while there was still brown on my brush, just to get a darker brown color and I'm just going to go over the little toe beans basically just the bottom of the feet. This portrait from memory was it had the dog like perched up on a fence it was so cute. 
So yeah, just painting the little feet in there. Dipping back into some brown. And I'm gonna shade these ears again. So just roughly on dry paper now, starting at the very tips and just slowly starting to bring them back towards the head. Whenever you're doing something like that, you wanna keep the strokes in line with the growth of that limb or hair. So you don't wanna do horizontal strokes. You wanna point them back towards the head. I've dried that all off and I've chucked another layer of brown on these eyes. And while I'm here, I'm gonna deepen up its little eyebrows, little marking on the corner of the eyes, above the cheeks, around the mouth again, just everything we worked on previously. Just to add another value in there and start to carve things out. A little shadow on the left of the snoot, and now I'm gonna paint the actual nose in. We can dip into some black for that, or if you'd prefer to have more of a bluey gray color from the mixed version, you can use that too. And keeping the top of that a little bit more watery to look like a highlight. I've added some Mars black into what was left of my brown mixture just to once again get a darker color. I'm going over those markings on the face. It's these tiny little tweaks, these tiny little things that just make something so inherently that thing. Like it's these little markings, these little expressions around the eyes that for me really made this portrait pop. Like it just, it very much started to remind me of my own dog. Their little tiny beady little eyes and their cute little eyebrows and the little eyeliner marks that come out from the edge of their eye. Such little things in all of these Dogtober portraits that just really characterize that breed. Little wash of blue gray color over the tip of the snout. One more little layer on the eyes before we dry this off. And then we can highlight them. Dipping into some white now with my three slash zero. And we're gonna pop the teeniest, tiniest of highlights in these teeny tiny little eyes. Those tiny little ones on the top of the eyes. I like to do two if I can fit them. I'm not gonna bother with the crescent shaped highlight at the bottom, these eyes are too teeny and beady. You could put a highlight on top of the nose as well if you wanted or under the nostrils, that's totally up to you. With the same brush now, I'm gonna dip straight into Mars Black and we're gonna paint some whiskers. So these are gonna be hanging over into the white of the fur, so there's really not much point painting them white. So I'm using black so that they'll stand out. So dragging them out from the side of the nose from that little white tip of the snout. And we can start to flick some of them down into the white of the fur. Try and vary up the length, the direction, cross some of them over each other if you can. It just helps them look all the more natural. I managed to get them really fine in this portrait, which is a win because usually mine end up blobby. And just finally, with a bit of brown on my brush, I'm just going over these eye markings again, just to make them pop a teeny tiny little bit more. And that is our Sheltie. Hope you enjoy this one and I'll see you in the next.